let's actually, yeah, let's let's do this. Get get that shot back up because this just really is incredible. Um, this is a piece of legislation that was announced, uh, I think, yesterday. I noticed uh, Jim Kessler from Third Way. Yeah, <laughs> Jim Kessler from Third Way was very excited about this. Thank a bipartisan, you. Bipartisan. What? I love the thank you. <laughs> what a loser. Uh, a bipartisan group of four senators proposes 4,000 refundable tax credits. Scroll back up, please. Uh, for skill training apprenticeship in a two and four year programs. We like it. <laughs> How many jobs? We're at well over 30 million unemployed in a span of several weeks. And we're, have we hit 100,000 deaths yet? We're going to shortly. We're close. Okay. So we are in, and I think we've hit 5 million cases globally. So this, you know, how we talk about how the third way model just doesn't fit, even if you like it. So, all this obsession with skill training stuff comes from the eighties and nineties, particularly the nineties. This was the third way answer Republicans. And I mean, never, no one is extreme as Republicans, but it's like, yeah, let's, let's have trade deals. Let's deindustrialize, And then let's give tax cuts to rich people. And then, you know, basically just build up a paramilitary uh, force to, to uh, you know, control peripheral communities who are dealing with the industrialization. And the Clintonian response was, yes, let's do all of that, but let's also give people some computer training jobs so that they can get jobs in the information sector, theoretically, and we can replace, like, I don't know, every one of a couple of jobs we're losing with some type of tech job, this obsession with we're going to globalize, we're going to deregulate, we're going to uh, cut taxes and we're going to make it easier to ship jobs overseas. And then we're going to re we're not going to get rid of the safety net entirely. That is the difference, but we're going to redesign the safety net. So the safety net is all about capacity building. Now this stuff did not succeed in protecting <laughs> vast swaths of the population when we were going through economic booms, when we were going through a tech boom, when we were going through a housing boom. This didn't work in terms of raising, you know, wages started to stagnate, inequality started to increase. Then, of course, over the last couple of years, several years, we've had the, you know, the acceleration of like the Uber and the temp economy. These people, in the midst of something that is faster and worse than 2008, have come out with a proposal that is a piddling example of something that you could see in the 90s. And they're excited about it. it it's honestly, it, yes, third way is funded by corporations. Yes, of course, Klobuchar and Booker are corporate-oriented Democrats and they're co-sponsoring with Ben Sass and Tim Scott, who are Republicans. So obviously there's the financial interest, but ideology is deep. I mean, this is like a religious invocation to do something this embarrassing in a crisis in this scale. It, it just isn't. And even if you want to defend it, that it's a perfectly nice program and helping people with skills or whatever, sure, that's fine. Throw that in a budget rider somewhere. Okay. If you included this as part of Medicaid expansion and a million other things we need to do, fine, great, whatever. But the idea that this is relevant to the crisis we're in is just, it's yeah. demented. It's the only well, word. It's like when they have these smart programs, what they mean is smarter than you. Like we're going to have this paternalistic way of coordinating you into the right use of this $4,000, right? Like we can't just give people money and like they would probably use it for self-improvement themselves or whatever they need, right? It has to be this, we're only going to give it to you if you go to this certain school, like, uh, and uh, fashion yourself into a certain type of labor that, you know, the capitalists that we listen to need right now. Like totally what is, what is a $4,000 tax credit to someone who has no income? <laughs> yeah. Like I don't even know what the economic principle is that they're trying to put into play here because our economy has shifted to be more and more service centric for a reason 
Um, and those jobs are obviously gone now for the foreseeable future. You're not going to magically create more. I guess they think they're going to create some more like bullshit jobs that people can do from home just by giving people the skills training to do those jobs. It's just, it's the tail wagging the dog. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the education. You're still muted, Michael. It's the education myth. Um, you know, all over again, but just now we get Ben Sass involved and some Republicans. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, yeah, no, that really was the story. The idea that, first of all, that these companies, I mean, even in the best of times, they just don't produce that scale of jobs. Yeah. There, there is no industrial equivalent, uh, you know, GM, Ford, whatever. Yeah, we need a ton of people to build cars and the associated manufacturing with those cars. What, what, what is the maximum amount of people that you need in the United States to work? I mean, Twitter, Apple, Google. A couple Not thousand. Well, yeah, I mean, well, if you force them to like, for instance, police their content with something more than algorithms, um, like absolutely. You, Look, if you right. started to say, you are actually a media company. You are right. actually, I mean, these things need to be broken down in constituent parts. There's, look, there are more jobs there, but even in a much more regulated, much more sane environment, nothing compared to industrial output. It just, it yeah. just isn't the same scale. No. Right. I mean, the real jobs that are being created by the tech sector that people can actually get are some of the worst gig economy jobs, right? Right. It's like you're being forced to become an essential worker because you have no other income. Um, and these jobs, the growth of the service sector, the growth of things like Instacart and Uber uh, is predicated on the gap between the averagely employed worker and the underemployed worker, which, by the way, is difficult to measure um, like the, the economy has recuperated unemployed people and made them underemployed people who are just competing against one another in a larger and larger pool for less and less money to do the tasks that make the averagely employed worker able to work themselves to death as well. So I, I don't see this being a, a stable thing. Um, there's, there's plenty of evidence that the drop in the demand for labor worldwide is not due to a lack of skills. It's not even due to automation. It's due to a process of secular stagnation that has been going on for decades and is a natural part of capitalist development. So not really sure what the, what the tax credit is going to do for that. I mean, yeah, there's there's different there's different because other people read this as, you know, the last several years, the economy has been humming. Uh, there was I mean, there was actually the first tiny, very small increase in wages uh, before this, actually. But that's yeah. all from a fundamentally lowered playing field. I mean, that's, that's that of, well, of underemployment, of worse jobs, of increasing inequality and yeah, you know, wasn't no there, benefits and everything else. Yeah. Wasn't yeah, there and, also a statistic about how like most of a huge, huge percentage of the jobs created since the recession were like these precarious gig? I think it's over 50%. Yeah. I believe yeah, so. It's so, a lot. And, and it's, it's only going to be worse, obviously, model. after after this. There's no question about that. And so um, basically, I mean, not to bring Yang back up again positively, but people are going to need uh, to provide for themselves uh, and more of the essentials of life without from sources besides their work income. Uh, and so basically, you have to decommodify a lot of this stuff. That's true. Though I care. Well, definitely decommodify. I, I'm a big, I, universal job guarantee is a biggie. Because it empowers oh, yeah. unions and it also allows a funding mechanism for all sorts of essential work and socially valuable forms of work that are never going to get generated by a market. But yeah. and I think it, it also it also provides some actual again, it's just a huge shot in the arm for unions. But 